I'm going to show you how to analyze your earnings reports from the Amazon Associate Program to figure out your impact if you do have a site using the Amazon Associates Program and you could figure out you know, how, uh, how big of a reduction most likely you're going to see on your site. So I'm Doug Cunnington and I'm from Niche Site Project. If you're watching this on YouTube, check out the link below. You'll want to go um, to the blog post uh, associated with this video so you can see how to pull the report or if you know how to pull the report you can grab it yourself so what I'm displaying right here is uh, essentially the raw data from the Amazon report in which I describe how to how to get that um, you'll notice I've you know I've blanked out the names and the tracking ID and the other you know sort of critical information um, just to sort of protect you know whatever it is that I'm selling uh, things from here. So what you basically end up doing is um, analyzing all this data. And for me, you know, the, the way I took a look at it was to actually create a pivot table. And it's pretty straightforward to do. Um, you simply go to insert and you insert a pivot table. Um, you know, typically the range will be correct, but if not, you just select the whole table, in this case, it should be um, you know, from A through K, and then the whole, the whole table here, it's accidentally selected um, just down to the second cell, but you can you know, go all the way down to however many it is. I won't scroll down because I didn't hide all the data through the whole thing, but the point is get all the data that you need to, click OK, and it'll create the pivot table. I've already done that and we'll click over here. So I did some quick analysis and I have a cleaner looking sheet that I'll show you in a second, but I just wanted to give you an idea of you know, what a pivot table would look like. Essentially it consolidates all the data um, into categories in this case, which is exactly what we want to see. Uh, additionally, you can, if actually if you've never seen pivot tables before they're awesome you could you know figure out all sorts of uh, great information you could you know see patterns that you've never seen before in data and you know a data set like you can get from Amazon is really cool in this case it was pretty easy um, I knew exactly how I wanted to grab this data and I'll show you the formulas that I used in a second but everything here is um, sort of created uh, by itself, by default, um, you, you just have to um, essentially get the field list in an appropriate way. The rows, you're going to have categories here, so you would just like drag this over to category. Um, you'll have the sum of the price, so the way you would do that is you just, um, it, actually, I'll, I'll remove this so you can, you can see it not there, so I'll remove the field. So you would drag the price down here, and um, I want to move it back the way it was. So the price is listed first, and then if you, um, you know, if it's not, if it's displaying, say, like the count of the price instead of the sum of the price, you can change it. So sometimes it'll show count or average or whatever. So if it was average, well, that doesn't tell us what we want to know. We want to make sure that it actually tells us the sum. Okay, so you, you would make sure you have the sum of the ad fees and the price. And I'll describe why we're doing that in a second. So for each one of these categories, you'll have like a new percentage, and that is you know what uh, the new fixed rate per category is. So for health and personal care, it's 4.5%, which is uh, 0.045, and so on. So um, I just you know, wanted to fill those in for a few, there's obviously a lot of categories. So I was like, well, I don't need to do every single category because most of the revenue comes from a handful. In fact, most of the revenue comes from that top line by a massive factor. So that said, um, you'll notice this little, this, this data here. So I thought, uh, you know, why don't I analyze like 90% of the data or at least down to, to this section here. So I took a look at um, let's see, that is actually 18, the top 18 categories, not the top 21, but it took a look at the top 18 categories and that accounted for $29,000, which is like 95% of the revenue. So these stats are all based on 
95% of the data over the last year. So that said, all I did um, was um, I, I multiplied uh, the sum of the price times the new rate to get the new amount that I would have been paid. So I just applied that across the board and was able to figure out you know, how much I would have been paid um, in the new uh, scenario. And I see somehow my formula got messed up here, which I'm not 100% sure why. But you can rest assured that if you multiply the, um, the new rate times the fees that you, uh, or sorry, the new rate times what you sold, then you'll get uh, the amount that, that you would have been paid. So like I said, I, I created a scratch sheet that was a little easier to look at. So once I copied and pasted everything over, these numbers actually work out right. <laughs> so that's, that's good. Um, that said, essentially what you end up doing is you figure out the rate that you were paid before, which is simple. It's just the sum of uh, the, the previous rate. So that's what you are actually paid. And then you calculate the new amount. Like I mentioned, that is simply uh, the sum of the price times the new percentage. And then that tells you how much you're paid. Then you sum that up. You get some figure. In this case, it's 19478 and um, when you do the math behind this, so you, you, you take uh, the 29,000, you subtract 19,000, and then you divide it by the 29,000, it tells you the rate of reduction. In this case, a 34% reduction, which is a pretty massive hit, so one third uh, lower than before. So that's um, a pretty big deal, and unfortunately, you know, I'm going to have to adjust, you know, a couple, I'm going to give some suggestions that, uh, you know, you can do, um, you know, some of those may be around, you know, finding other products, look at other affiliate programs, but, you know, honestly, and I'll go into to more depth in, inside the blog post, but in a lot of ways, um, Amazon is still maybe the best way to monetize these type of sites because, you know, for me in my particular site around the retail season, you know, people don't just buy um, one thing, they buy a whole lot of other things. And let's say I was able to find an affiliate program that paid me, I don't know, 15%. Let's just make up a number, say so they pay 15%. Um, unfortunately, you know, I would only get paid the 15% on the specific product in which, um, you know, the person purchased uh, on that other affiliate program. But on Amazon, a person could be doing all of their Christmas shopping and I would get paid for uh, the commission on all that Christmas shopping. So it's a thing that you'll have to test. You'll have to understand your niche and the market. And then, you know, some companies don't have an alternative affiliate program to take a look at. So, I mean, you may be sort of uh, stuck with Amazon. You know, in my opinion, it's not, uh, it's just a change, right? It's a little bit different. It's definitely a big hit to the revenue, but at the same time, it's not necessarily um, you know, a deal breaker for me. Um, a lot of people are very, uh, <laughs> they're very reactionary and I'm trying to take it a little more like analytically and I don't have to react right away. It's still a long game uh, to play. And if you, know, if you get traffic to your site, there will be a way to monetize it um, well. So, okay. Uh, again, I'm Doug Cunnington from Niche Site Project. If you want to check out like more of the information, uh, head over to the link uh, below the video if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're on, um, you know, if you're on my site, uh, thanks. Hope you enjoyed it.